Okay, we're headed towards Bodega Bay. We're just not making any headway. We'll run, run out of fuel or miss our weather window or both. Last time we were forced to turn into Bodega Bay to hide from weather, only to sit for 10 days with extreme conditions that had us going a little stir crazy. We are picking up anchor at Bodega Bay. It'd be great to be able to actually sail somewhere. Getting out of Blodega. Blodega. Once and for all. And here's the real attraction. <laughs> Is that your sexy face? Twitchy. <laughs> sexy twitchy, okay, got it. Note taken. <laughs> your jaw is doing some weird things over there. Well, we are still in California, but we are getting a little taste of the Pacific Northwest weather here. It's been raining off and on this morning. So we are huddled under the Dodger but luckily with these side panels we made, we are pretty darn cozy and dry. Even Fathom is cozy and dry. We have shut the engine off after about 12 hours of motoring today because we've got a nice southerly pushing us up the coast. It's right behind us, so it's a little little wing on wing action with the pole up and we have our our boom preventer system set up and it's working really well and Jack just put sausages on the pan down below and we're gonna have some dinner dinner kitty's eating dinner kitty's happy the engine is off right kitty how do you feel right now I got just said she's these 20 knots in the right direction Preferably from behind. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Do you even know how to wink for reals or is that just a weird face you make when you pretend to wink? Night one, leaving from Bodega Bay, heading to Crescent City. We don't hear the rumble of the engine because we actually got to sail. We need to shut off the engine right before dinner and we've been sailing ever since. It's awesome that we're getting to sail and save ourselves a little bit of the fuel cost and saving the environment as well. It feels like our perseverance and patience waiting out that crappy, crappy weather in Bodega Bay is paying off. Looks like we'll have a good weather window to get up to Crescent City. We had an awesome, awesome night sailing last night. Just like epic. Just don't even know how to explain how awesome it was. Gemini just is just such a beast. We were comfortable. We averaged about five and a half to six knots all night. And then this morning the wind finally died and then clocked around to our bow after being behind us all night. So I had to turn on the engine around just before sunrise. Now we are just south of Cape Mendocino. All is well. I've got, got Fathom keeping me company on my lap here. She did great last night. She was really happy that the engine was off and she was actually down below a lot. Um, she even like played with her toys down below and everything. Um, she's great. She's got like her own little gimbal system when we're underway. It's really cute. She just kind of rocks back and forth and keeps herself steady. She's, she's such a trooper. By the end of my watch shift, Cape Mendocino was within sight, peeking through the fog. As we approached the Cape, the seas got lumpy and confused. Where is she, honey? Oh my gosh, I've been around this Cape twice in my life already. What? Crazy. It's a little different when you're on your own boat, I think. Keep Mendocino. We've been looking at this place for months now on a chart. But it poked its head out for me to look at right when I got on shift. So now it's kind of obscured by the clouds. But the 
the black albatrosses are circling around. Uh, the wind is back out of the north, so we cut the motor on and I'm ready to see what I can see. Try to get some footage of it if it peaks out again. Pretty amazing. Got a tiny handkerchief on the gym out. And I got a wet, soggy day tail. <laughs> This was a monumental moment. The most challenging and intimidating stretch of sea was behind us, and it felt like the Pacific Northwest eagerly awaited our arrival. Kitty, this is your first time rounding Cape Mendocino. How do you feel? Just like, whatever. Day, day two since we left the day bay and we are just off the coast of Eureka probably won't be able to see it but there's like a little town somewhere over there Jack is down below resting and Fathom is somewhere in that pile there's a cat down there somewhere <laughs> We haven't really seen much wildlife so far. Jack said he saw one whale spout, but Cape Mendocino was quite uneventful. We did have a little bit of bumpy waters like on the northern half of Cape Mendocino, especially considering the last time I went around Cape Mendocino, we saw 42 knots and 12 foot seas, and it was just absolutely nasty. So I'm really glad that we were patient and we waited it out. So we should be getting into Crescent City tonight by like 3 or 4 a.m. We'll see. So we found that doing three hour shifts in the evening and at night, a lot of people like to do four hours on, four hours off. Three hours seems to work for us. It gives us enough time to rest, but the person that's on watch doesn't feel like they're like dying of that last hour. And you don't want someone tired and exhausted on watch anyways, because then they're not paying attention and they're potentially putting you in danger. So figure out what works for you and your crew. Yeah, flexibility is key on a boat. approached the entrance to Crescent City Harbor as the sun was coming up, providing us with just enough light to make our way to the guest dock. 
tired and salty from the first major leg of our passage north, we passed out to rest and recuperate for most of the morning. Woohoo! Crescent City! We made it! 48 hours on the dot. From uh, Bodega Bay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When we woke up, we were forced to deal with the most glamorous part of boat life, fixing our boat in random places. Shit! Critical mass, honey! What'd you do? I was sitting on the can and we got tossed on a big wave and I got <laughs> tossed and I knew all and the- And the rest is history. I knew all the sounds weren't good, but I didn't want to accept my fate. And now the base of the toilet's cracked. And it's leaking. Yay! <laughs> we put in an order for the toilet and went to find a late breakfast on land. All right, our bellies are full. To the brim. Very full. We went to Fisherman's Restaurant. It's the local spot right by the harbor. We called the harbor office and since we're just staying like the day, we're not gonna spend the night. They actually said that we don't have to pay anything to stay here, so that's really awesome. At first they said it was gonna be $25 and then they called back and said, actually, scratch that, you're not staying the night, don't worry about it. So that's really cool. We're gonna go grab our bags and head to Safeway. That's about a 20 minute walk from the harbor. With a boat full of provisions, we headed to pump out and then to the fuel dock, which requires some acrobatics to climb the ladder and tie the dock lines, a task much easier to do at high tide. All right, well, we stayed less time than we really thought in Crescent City. We got here this morning and we're leaving at around 4.30 p.m. because there's no time to waste when you've got good weather. So we fueled up, we provisioned, we had some breakfast on land, and now it's time to get back out there. So, yeah. And the next stop is Newport. Catch us next time as we continue to sail up the coast, crossing state borders with Gemini for the first time. Okay, crossing the California-Oregon border. We deal with unsettling close calls with nighttime traffic offshore and make it to Newport, Oregon. Newport brings its own challenges, including waiting for parts, tons of rain, and the sketchiest river bar crossing we've ever experienced. Until next time, thanks so much for watching, and a huge thanks to our Patreon crew for keeping the wind in our sails. Don't forget to subscribe to catch our next offshore adventure.